So you've seen the title of this video and it is not clickbait. It truly is what's going on and nobody's talking about it. Now let me explain what exactly is happening here. So this here, this is, this is, this is my clean shop. This is the place that I do resin printing where I store all my resin. This is the workshop that I created way back when and this is where I use all of my resin. Now one of the things of this space is there is no real quote, good ventilation, but at the same time, I had this activated carbon filter to try and sort of sort that all out, which got me thinking, why can't we just make our own carbon filters? Of course, because, right, we get given carbon filters all the time with our resin printers, and inside of these, we know we get these lovely blocks, and that works just fine, right? Well, I thought, let's make a DIY one. And I got as far as designing this and getting really almost to the point of 3D printing the whole thing. In fact, it was just going to be get yourself a computer fan, get yourself a 9 volt battery, an on off switch, and a fish tank filter because that's what Elgu themselves told me that, hey, if you want to replace your own filter, just cut it out of one of these. I have an entire video of this, so go check it out in the cards. So. I was very close to going forward with the whole video like that. And then I went, hold on, Jonathan, let's check things. So I created this, this lovely little quick and easy test. So it's got a whole 10 by 10 by 10 block, this PC fan in it. And I went ahead testing. Now, after I do a resin print in here, I actually have this air quality meter right here. And this lovely thing lets me know, well, how bad the air is. Right this minute, it's not too bad. This is the TVOC, which is volatile organic compounds that are in the air. And this is at, right this minute, 3.7. Not too, too bad. You shouldn't be in it for a long, long, long time, but it's not considered hypertoxic. However, after 3D printing, this goes to 9.999. It goes off the reading and there's nothing I can do about it. That's how the space was yesterday. So after I've left everything open for a good long time, hold on, I'm just putting this off to the side. So after I left everything open for a good long time, it got down to 3.6. I also made sure that I cured any leftover resin that was about and I left the door open for a while. Now that sucks for resin printing because we need heat to make sure that the chemical reaction happens well. So I was like, okay, let's get this carbon filter going. I put it on and you know what? Half an hour in, no change. One hour in, no change. So I thought maybe it needs a little bit more time. So then I left it for another two hours running at full pelt, this lovely thing. Nothing, no change whatsoever. There was one change. It no longer smelt as bad. So this is definitely removing the odor, but it's not removing the actual toxicity from the air. Now, don't get me wrong. I do know that you need a whole bunch more of actual proper activated carbon to clean a space that is truly toxic. I've worked with laser cutting and high volumes of that. And you basically need probably two, three, six kilos of activated carbon for the air to get filtered through to make sure it really clean. So, I sort of knew that these weren't really doing that much, which is why I always wear my volatile organic compound mask here whenever I'm doing any type of resin printing. I also wear chemical gloves as well as a lab coat because, well, you just don't want this stuff to touch your skin. Now, I know many of you are going to be thinking, okay, okay, Jonathan, you're, you're preaching to the choir or I'm being a little bit, well, overreactive. I'm going to tell you this right now. Currently, all studies suggest that any exposure to any type of UV resin over an extended period of time creates a sensitivity to your skin. So I've experienced this with formaldehyde, dealing with it in laser cutting. I used to have no reaction whatsoever with it. And then all of a sudden I started to get rashes. And now it gets to the point that if there's too much formaldehyde, I just go up in rashes. I don't even need to touch it. So I don't want that to happen with resin because I really enjoy the hobby. So I'm going to mitigate that as much as possible. And that's why I was making this lovely carbon filter. And hopefully that was going to be a great little open source project that was just going to work for everyone involved. But I'm going to here to tell you now 
and it just doesn't work. So if you're resin printing in a closed space or you think you're safe because you've got these carbon filters going, it really isn't and it's going to screw you up. Now this is a whole bunch of lovely nasties that you get from it. Now I know that the reading of my volatile organic compound just sort of puts all of them in one category but the truth is it doesn't matter which volatile organic compound you're exposed to with time they're not exactly great. So how do you figure out how to lower it here? And the trickiest part is we need to try and keep heat in this space because I want to be able to do and pull off some really ambitious 3D prints. So I need to make sure that this space can stay at a very nice 25, 35 degrees when I'm 3D printing some really big prints. And there's only one way to sort that out. Let me go get it. Oh, and this is it. Now for some of you, it's gonna be very obvious, for others not. This is a heat exchange unit, which is going to let me get air in, get transferred here. The heat exchange is about 70 to 80% efficient and air comes out. So what happens? Air comes in and then comes out this way. Air comes in and comes out this way. There's a lovely little magic thing that happens right there that basically transfers the heat. Now I'm hoping that this is going to be the solution to all of my problems because if I try to vent straight from the case of a 3D printer or resin 3D printer, it's just gonna cool it right the way down. And I cannot afford that when I'm gonna be dealing with resin prints that are going to get pretty mighty big. So now that we know the whole story of what's got me to this point here, let's see if this is going to do anything at all. I'm gonna do this really quick and dirty, just gonna get this thing going out of the window, point the hoses in different directions. I'm gonna pour resin on a little tray here, cure it up, get the air in here really nice and nasty once again. And then let's see if this will clear the space, hopefully even while there's actively nasties being created in the space itself. So here we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's nothing else that I can call that a result. Truly, I'm really happy that I've been able to get some clean air in here so quickly using this. And the great part is, is I know we weren't looking at temperature really, but I only went down 0.5 of a degree. I started this at 22 degrees in here. It's now 21.5 and truly it's been awesome knowing that. I thought I was going to take way longer, which is why all of a sudden I brought the clock in and I sped it up really quickly. It's because I turned it into a time lapse, but only half an hour after I did that or 20 minutes after I did that, it just plummeted down. And then what was really funny is that in the time lapse, all of a sudden it went back up. So it must have been sucking in some outside pollution at some point. But all I can say is that I'm really happy that the, for me, the TVOC is sorted out in here. It also means that I'm gonna be able to take on those much bigger resin printing projects. And now for you, I would say, well, if you're not gonna be doing gigantic 3D printing projects, maybe put yourself next to a window, make sure there's not too much UV light coming from it, put a fan right next to it to bring, circulate some airflow there. It's gonna be tricky because I know temperature is really, well, tricky to deal with when it comes to resin printing. And if you want to basically just skip all of the hassle, you can check out this video sponsor. PCB Way is the perfect companion for all makers out there. They provide not just superb PCBs, but also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and every type of 3D printing under the sun. To see how PCB Way can add value to your projects, click the link down in the description. And a big thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. So what are the key takeaways I'm getting from this? Well, 
ultimately these activated carbon filters that come with 3D printers are a little bit useless. All they're going to do is remove the smell and leave you with the nasties. And that means you're going to spend more time in there, which means you're going to be doing the number one thing you shouldn't do with volatile organic compounds and spend more time in them. So make sure you get yourself some airflow or maybe even get yourself an air reading device like I have. It's down linked in the description if you want to look at the one that I have. And that will let you know just how bad is it. Maybe you've got to ventilate a little bit more, open a window, put a fan out, whatever. If you're going to be doing this for more than once or twice a week, maybe think about actually having some sort of extraction system. And you're going to probably need a heat recovery unit so you don't cool it down. Because if you cool it down, you're just going to keep getting failed prints. and You're going to be wondering why on earth does it keep failing? So make sure you use the correct PPE. So I'm using a lab coat, double gloving, using chemical resistant gloves. I'm also using a volatile organic compound mask. And if you're thinking I'm overreacting here, it's not just me. I've actually was thinking of doing an entire video of just how res how deadly is resin really. And I know there's people online and even chemists online saying that it's not that bad. It, the truth is it's not that bad. As long as you're doing the correct PPE and following all the correct instructions, including massive ventilation because the truth is that if we're doing what pretty much every other average Joe is doing and just maybe wearing gloves maybe a little bit of those paper masks you are honestly seriously endangering yourself so what I did was I had an entire list of questions and I actually asked and paid a whole bunch of PhD chemists to answer me those questions on Biasly and they've pretty much all come back with the same sort of result saying, yeah, if I was going to do this, I can definitely do it. And it's because I would follow all the correct PPE and use a ventilation and all of that good stuff. But if you're not doing that, you are seriously putting yourself in harm's way. Doesn't matter which resin you use out there. They're all the same. They all have these nasty stuff in it. So I'm sorry if that was a bit of a downer. I just wanted to get this out there. I thought I was going to do an awesome little project to help everyone here. Instead, it's going to be one of these freaking public service safety announcements. A massive thank you to my patrons. Truly, you guys are amazing. Without you, I truly would not be able to make Maker Tales. And if you're enjoying what I'm doing here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Remember that we have a Discord that's linked down in the description. Look after yourself. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.